Hello everyone and welcome to the Classification and Division Introduction Mini Lecture for Ms. Montgomery's English 111 classes at Blue Ridge Community College. Classification and Division is our second major unit in English 111 and it's the rhetorical mode that we'll mostly be focusing on in discussion activities as you've already begun to do and as well for your second essay. So what is classification and division? What is this way of thinking and sorting information that we're working with? It's something you've definitely do all the time and that you've definitely encountered in your life before. Think of various kinds of organization, inventory at stores. You go to the grocery store and things are classified into produce and dairy and frozen and so forth. Or in your personal lives, the way you organize your home you have all sorts of categories. I have a few thousand books in my house and I keep them alphabetical by author. Another person might choose to sort their books by subject or something. And then reference works like encyclopedias are usually structured alphabetically but you might also have a reference work that's structured chronologically or thematically. Think of our course textbook, Lee Jacobus has those essays structured according to broad themes, but they could just as easily be chronological or geographical or some other way of arranging the information. And we also apply these kinds of frameworks to information when we're prioritizing whether you pay bills in the order that they're due or whether you have tasks at work that are rated in terms of urgency or something like that. So when we look at information in terms of categories, in terms of sorting, we get logical order. I mentioned the example of a grocery store. Think if a grocery store just put things on the shelf in the order they came off the truck, you'd never be able to find anything. Classifying and dividing gives us connections between parts and a whole. If you think of alphabetizing documents and then going back through them, you know where you are within the alphabet. You know where you are in terms of beginning and end. The different categories also give us the connections between parts. And in general, doing this sort of thing, alphabetizing my books, sorting shoes by color, whatever the case may be, breaking the grocery store down into departments, takes information that would otherwise be random and makes it coherent and legible so that we can think through it and think with it. A couple of other examples, types of sorting or common everyday experiences of sorting. I've mentioned alphabetical order. I've mentioned the layout of a grocery store. Think of television programming. Most of us these days have those on-screen guides, and the default is that they're sorted numerically from the smallest numbered channel up to the highest numbered channel. But you can also often sort them into categories. You can often sort them into time. Amazon.com has very sophisticated algorithms that look at what you purchased and looked at and what other people purchased and looked at and suggests things for you or sends you advertisements in the future. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can help you find things you're looking at, but always pay attention to the fact that that's being done for marketing. And sometimes it doesn't work out quite the way they want it to. I'm sure you're all aware of the way that Google and other networks pick on keywords from sites you've visited or search you've done, searches you've done, and then customize advertisements for you that way. I did continuing education through Cal State University Fullerton and their mascot is the Titan and so their online system is called Titan and some other things of that nature. So based on my computer use, the NFL decided that I was a Tennessee Titans fan and that I would like to receive emails about the Tennessee Titans. I am in fact a Philadelphia Eagles fan, but there you have it. Pandora Internet Radio is another case where you really make your own sorting principle. You create categories of what types of stations you want to have and what types of music you would like to hear. Think about in popular culture the Hogwarts sorting hat which looks at people's personalities and puts them into their houses. And I'm sure if you maybe pause the video and think for a moment you would think of maybe organizing principles for classes you've taken how the syllabus was ordered, or maybe something at your work 
maybe something in, again, how you arrange your home or how you like to arrange your materials for studies. So take a moment and just consider some of the examples of classifying and dividing you do or encounter on a daily basis. And we've talked a little bit about why we do this. We do it for organizing at the grocery store with my books at home. Sometimes we do it for persuading. I talked about Amazon and marketing, and that's all marketing is, trying to persuade you to buy something. Other times you make decisions. When I was buying a house, when I moved down here several years ago, I had a few items that were most important to me, and I really looked at those in every house, and that's how I made my decision. Sometimes information. Think of times you've been to lectures or orientation sessions where you're told here are the five most important things to know about whatever it is. So as with all of these rhetorical modes, they're useful ways of interacting with information. But then the real goal is doing something with the information, making some kind of claim, making some kind of argument and discussion. So I'm going to encourage you again to do kind of a short brainstorm here to pause the video and list maybe 15, 20 movies. First movie titles that pop into your head. Just go with them. And then think about two or three different ways that you could categorize them. If you were categorizing them by the decade they came out or categorizing them by their ratings, you might get very different combinations and you might get very different pictures of how that's going to look. And so you'd use that to make different kinds of arguments. So again, take just a few minutes, five, ten minutes, list off some movies and think about some other ways you could sort them and then what you might do with that information. If you had movies sorted out by decade, what audience would that be useful for and what could you discuss? If you had movies sorted out based on geographic location of shooting, what kind of arguments would you make and what kind of audience might be interested in those? If you used the rating system of the United States versus the rating system that's common in another country, what list of movies might you get and what kind of arguments might you make with that? So again, take a few minutes and kind of think that through. Thank you for participating in that movie brainstorming activity. And then as you think ahead and as you go back into the Blackboard site and look at your SA2 assignment and begin to do research and begin to think about topics, just notice in your daily life when you're sorting, when you're categorizing, or when you are being presented with information that's treated in this way and for what purposes and why. And this will be, again, our rhetorical focus for this second unit. Thank you.